right, welcome back. You're just tuning in. We're getting ready. We're ace week. Uh, main 70.3 this weekend. It's Thursday. The last thing you heard off was after the long run on Sunday. Uh, Monday, we were supposed to do that 5K park run, which was canceled due to thunderstorms. So I believe Monday uh, kind of got a little bit of a rest day in there. Uh, Tuesday, went, we had a bike ride, a little interval ride indoors uh, before work. Got that in. Actually went to the pool that night just to get some, uh, you know, just smooth swimming in. Get in the pool, get in the hot tub, get in the sauna there. And then yesterday morning, quick five mile easy run before work as well and then uh today thursday we're all from work we're leaving tomorrow morning i had a 45 minute uh quick interval ride on the bike today just some quick efforts five by 30 seconds a 45 minute ride um kind of just finished that up no i'm not sweating because of that after that we ate breakfast did the you know did the housework did the lawn uh logged a nice mile walk out there i'm actually sweating more doing the lawn than i was doing the bike ride um so get the house squared away get everything done get the family set up so we can head out what else we got going on today i gotta pack i gotta prep some food some meals um still debating what time to leave tomorrow but gonna get up there I actually just found out that the airbnb that i just switched to recently from a hotel because i'm about 30 minutes out of race site um the airbnb was a little closer than the hotel still you know distance outside of the city uh the, the bike course actually goes right past the front of the airbnb uh there's a turn on the bike course around mile 20 and goes right past the property so what's cool about that is i'm going to be able to get there um and recon the bike course i can actually when i do my little ride when i get there just to uh shake things out i'll be able to actually ride that stretch of the bike course and if it's a new course, I like to ride it uh, in the car, follow it just to see how the road conditions are uh, and the hills and everything like that. It's a lot better to see it than to see it first on race day. So I'll be able to just leave the driveway right there and just head on out and, and do one loop and be back at the house. So kind of got me excited on that one because um, I wasn't so sure about what was going to go on with that Airbnb. And it's a uh, second floor on the Airbnb and the person staying on the first floor of that guest house is actually doing the race too. The uh, Airbnb owner messaged me, so it should be fun. Um, the owners are, you know, excited that the race is going on past her house, and so maybe have some people to talk to up there when we get up there. You know, ease that anxiety a little bit, because uh, if races still don't, you know, stress you a little bit, then you know maybe maybe you're not pushing hard enough. But we're gonna pack, finish up the rest of the stuff. We'll catch up with you later. Got some more stuff to do around the house, and uh, and that's it. Maybe we'll catch you when we're on the road. what's going on it's Friday 9 a.m. on our way up uh, about halfway up we're just west of Boston in Massachusetts smooth ride so far no traffic um, you know since this is out there and you know people are following along and, and seeing what's gonna go on race day race weekend there's a couple of people that ask me you know what my expectations are what my ambitions are or goals this weekend but unlike the last few 70.3s there's really no set time goal uh, it's a new course so there is some unknowns to that if it was a course I've done before I'd have you know a lot more uh, confidence and maybe shoot for a certain time but all in all I think uh, the real goal is just to have a good race day have everything come together since this is the, the first of three this year uh, just have a solid day hopefully everything goes well uh, make sure the training is, is proper to get these this distance done uh, comfortably with a good effort uh, but at the end of the day yeah there are some numbers in my head uh, I've ranged from I believe last year's main race was uh, 448 
again, it was a different course. Uh, that was definitely a PR. Going sub five was uh, really awesome. But uh, for Sunday though, I mean, my goal would be really nice to put it all together. Go, let's just say, you know, break 515. You know, that's kind of what I'm shooting for. Uh, anything close to five is phenomenal. Um, and any day that I'll ever possibly beat five again is uh, a really good day, which uh, may or may not be a goal for one of the next two races. Since it is, uh, there'll be courses that kind of really suit my training and things like that, flatter, fast courses. But, you know, we'll get out there, we'll get it done. And, uh, you know, hitting uh, that 515 or below would be, you know, really awesome. I think I put that amount of effort in to the training so far this year. And, um, you know, we're gonna push, but we're not gonna push to the point of, of breaking. That's what I say now, because uh, there is more training that has to be done afterwards and other races that I'm going to try a little harder on this year. So this is good to get back into this half iron distance. Uh, I like this distance. Uh, people ask me, you know, are you doing an Ironman this year? Are you doing one next year? But the real, uh, you know, if you followed along last year, it was... If I'm gonna choose that distance again, then I need to make that agreement with my family because it is a very large time commitment. And for anybody that knows me or follows along here, knows that when I pick a goal like that, then I'm all in. I have to get the training done. I get all the hours in. There's no excuses. I get it done. Um, and I know now what it takes and the amount of hours to do that distance well. Um, and I always like to do better. So next time around, I'm going to push a little more in, the, in training and just not ready to invest that much time. I'm having fun at this distance. It's a very, very good distance that you can do the training well in, get it all accomplished, that 70.3 training, uh, and still have time for other things in life. Um, helping to coach a few athletes, work, family, uh, some other endeavors in life right now. Um, it just allows it to be definitely, um, you know, doable for sure. So that's what I got. That's the takeaway. That's the goals and uh, that I really didn't discuss for this weekend. We're just going to finish up the drive here. Again, we uh, should be in New Hampshire within the hour. And then we'll head up to Maine. Uh, plan for today is try and get there, get unpacked, uh, do a little bike ride, a little shake out, get these legs stretched out, get them moving from sitting in this car for six hours. Uh, and that's about it. So as soon as we uh, get closer up there to Maine, touch back with base with you and uh, we'll get on with race weekend. Country roads in Maine. Just getting a little ride in. We're staying uh, at a house that's at mile 22 and a half on the bike course. So I rode out from there, 10 miles out. Uh, definitely a hilly part of the course. The whole course is pretty hilly. I'm gonna drive the rest of it later. A lot of farms, cows, all that good stuff. Roads are pretty smooth back here in the country part. I'm curious what, how it gets towards the city. It's warm out, so you can't see it getting much warmer than this on race day. It's like 2, 2.30 in the afternoon here. So the bike times are probably going to be a little slower.
definitely foresee some slower bike times, probably higher power output numbers, but it's all good. It's gonna be a challenging day, fun day. Be nice to have a good day. Oh, put this race in the cookie jar, it's just having a good day. Trying to give you a couple sights on the way back. Hit a turnaround, go back 10 miles. Maybe just do a quick, easy mile or two run. Shake the legs out. I'm sitting in the car all day. Then I might drive the course early evening just to get that out of the way so I don't have anything to do but check in tomorrow. A little sketchy part, there's no shoulder here, so put the camera away, get you some views on the next road. places sometimes on vacation you really don't get to enjoy it but get on your bike and go for a 50 or 100 mile bike ride during one of these races yeah, you can experience everything I mean, it really is beautiful just remember most of the time Every uphill has a downhill. Most of the time. I didn't say all the time. All right, hour bike. 20 miles done. Quick two mile run. One out, one back. A lot of wind on the course. It's good to check what it'll be race morning versus what the wind is right now. You're gonna be very curious driving this course, seeing what the rest of it looks like. I'll report back on my thoughts and see where we're at. I'm gonna finish this run up. A little bit of cloud cover right now. It's perfect. It's hot, but the sun's not out. Check your bike in tomorrow. Only the bike is needed tomorrow, though. You don't need to bring all your equipment. Bring that with you on Sunday, okay? And uh, you're going to put everything below your bike. It's a one trans. All right, athlete briefing done. Got a lot of good information out of that. The advertised uh, swim temp for this race was 69 degrees. Today, 78 plus degrees. And with no hopes of it going down. So it is a wetsuit optional race. If I decide to wear it, I'll have to start in the back of the field. Uh, I wasn't actually planning on that. I actually brought a sleeved suit as an option because I thought it'd be cold. So with the temperature being 78 plus degrees, potentially even get higher. I actually brought that long sleeve suit because I thought it'd be actually cold, but it is what it is. Um, haven't swam open water without a wetsuit this year, 
Last year for Tennessee, I was anticipating having a uh, no wetsuit race um, for the full Ironman, and it actually wound up being wetsuit legal at the last minute because they had so much rain prior. Um, so that was a river. I was anticipating no wetsuit there for 2.4 miles. Uh, swimming is the weaker of the discipline. So I had the option. You start at the back with a couple hundred that decide to wear it. Or just jump in. I mean, you don't even get the buoyancy of being in the ocean or any salt. This is swim start. So where I'm walking right now is the rail trail. As you can see, there's train tracks that go by here. This is the run course, most of it anyway, right here, up and down this rail trail, two laps. Problem is, since it's a river swim, you start 1.2 miles upstream and there's no buses in the morning. So they recommended walking to go see the start. That's what we did, just to be able to see as a leisurely walk, how long it takes you. And it took like 20 minutes to get over there. Race starts at six. Transition opens at 4.30, so theoretically, latest you can really leave is like 5.30 out of transition, so it's going to be an early morning, um, especially to get there the way it looks like they're corralling swimmers, it's going to be kind of tight, it's going to take a while to get everybody in, but this is uh, what we're going to do, it's going to be a potentially non-wetsuit 1.2 mile swim with a 20 minute walk to transition in the morning, it's going to be a long t1 uphill it's going to be a true 56 mile hilly bike ride this is no rolling hills over 3,000 feet of elevation and then we get on the run and the run looks okay um, this is basically the run course this is a few little climbs but you just got to hit them twice but should be pretty good otherwise So that swim exit, steep out of the water, up that carpet, more uphill. Probably about 600 meters after you get up that carpeted hill. This way, talk about warming those legs up before the bike. So it should be pretty interesting for all these people running up here, you know, splashing around with soaking wet from being in the swim, trying to get their wetsuits off. I don't know what the temperature of the water is yet, but we'll find out soon. But this trail just keeps on going. It's definitely the longest, steepest 
swim exit. Better be a current because this is going to be some long T1 times. See where the entrance actually is to transition. So I would think that this is the run out and swim in. At the top of the hill there. We measured exactly a quarter mile. A four and a half minute regular walk from the top of that carpet to here. So it's going to take a few minutes to get to transition. Nice and empty today. So it's probably just past six o'clock in the evening, about half mile to go. I just got to bring the bike down tomorrow around two o'clock. Chose a late time. There's no reason to get down here early. Did everything I had to do today. Uh, there was really nobody here today, so it was actually really nice. Uh, and get her hopefully a decent night's sleep tonight. Uh, go eat, relax, just veg. This will be the, the true last sleep before the race because tomorrow, the, even if you get to bed early, it's just shot. But this is it. We're here. I will probably check in with you race morning or night before just to give you some final thoughts and then we'll see what happens uh goal wise i think we shift a little bit here after seeing the course um, and with the swim definitely be slower so my guess is probably just under 5 30 i would say time wise just looking to enjoy the day as opposed to uh really racing this course so so we shall see we'll see what the day brings all right we'll see you on race day let me take you for a ride